Well, g'day, g'day. This is Pedro Harvey. We are here on the eve of trout opening for the year 2012 for the rivers here in Victoria. And we're up at the good old Preston Northcote Angling Club Lodge. And you're, you're probably sick and tired of these videos that I make up here at the Preston Northcote Angling Club Lodge. But it's a fantastic place. It's down there at Murray Road. And if you ever want to come in and, and join, please feel free. You can grab a drink at the bar. You can uh, sit in on the meeting. You can listen to the presiding committee preside. You can participate. And uh, after you've had a drink at the bar and presided and so forth and so on, you can go and get yourself some supper. And it's a full of history, this club. It was formed on the 4th of July, 1922, and there's some beautiful old photographs around the place uh, just showing off the club. Now, I have here the president of the Preston Northcote Angling Club, Mr Ken Eli, and I've got him here to explain to me what the hell's going on this weekend because we have some sort of complex competition. Can you please explain to our viewers... The opening of the trout season is all about the Hauker Association Interclub Competition, which is, amongst others, Preston Northcote, um, hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hey. Dunlop Bayswater, uh, Clayton RSL, and a few other clubs that all participate in a competition uh, uh, over two days, So, uh, and it's around the Eildon Lake and the rivers. Uh, weighing conditions are all fish have got to be over uh, 35 centimetres. It's a trout only competition, so everybody's out there flogging the water for trout and uh, hopefully catching a few. But uh, uh, and we're looking forward to a good weigh in. Now, now, just tell the viewer why are there so many clubs in this particular part of Eildon? Because I think that's quite unusual. Way right back in the 50s. Uh, the then State Rivers and Water Supply set up uh, this area of land for camping and club participation. So there were five clubs that actually applied for and got blocks of land here. Uh, and and they've, we've been here now and originally this was Northcote and of course Preston, um, uh, through an arrangement with Northcote, acquired it off Northcote and then we uh, amalgamated with Northcote anyhow, so uh, this is the Northcote Lodge and all the other four uh, original places. Camping is no longer allowed in the area because Colvin Murray, who now run the area, uh, don't uh, allow camping, but uh, we have access and it's a lovely place. So there you go, viewer. You should join one of these clubs because you'll meet all these wonderful people like Ken yeah, and like me, and you'll probably be on the next Pedro Harvey video. Now, Behind me is the beautiful Lake Yildon, which personally I consider a very difficult trout fishery uh, compared to uh, Lake Parambit, Bull and Mare, Lake Fines out there in the west. I think it's much harder than those lakes. Let's see what some of the other members think about that. Well, here's this bars and shut up. I don't know about this, but I mean, if you're a trout fisherman, you'll catch fish out there. If you're a carp fisherman, you'll catch fish out there. But he knows he's getting his work out. But has it gotten better or worse? They get older and they work it out. For trout. Worse. Worse, Doug? On the canal, I'm a me, man. No, no, no. Yeah. The trout are there if you want to fish them. If you work hard enough, you'll catch fish at any time. It's a good fishery, it will be better, but it's certainly overrun by car and roach. So you think it's as good as a Parambit or a Bull and Merai or a Lake Fines? On a stay it can be, yeah. No, but you've got a problem you've got with a go... short-assed old man that doesn't have real opinion. But you be quiet, I'll interview you, you later. You, you've got to go to the places where the fish are, though. You can't just dump anywhere and expect to catch fish. You've got to find I personally don't think it's up to scratch. I think Bull and Merai, Parambit are better fisheries, but you still do get your good fish out of here. Now why? Why is this giant lake that's stocked to the bejesus, got all these rivers flowing into it, why? So much bigger, I think. You think it's just size? Just I think it's size. I think the fish are out there, they're just harder to find. Well, it's Friday evening and this is the first bit of fishing action since we got up here. And that is to get some bait and drink your Cooper's Red. Cheers. Now what I have here is a remarkable piece of equipment. I would have thought it was completely illegal until I read the regulations myself. 
This is a six metre long bait net and uh, we've burly the water here a bit with some cat food and we're going to drag it through to see if we can get some little red fin and a roach and I have no idea whether this will work but uh, let's have a look, see what happens. Alright, we're hauling this bloody bait net through the water, it's a bit difficult because I'm holding the straps as I walk. Tough shot to get for you, the viewer. Well, that sweep of the area didn't work. Nothing. Not sure I'm using this bloody net correctly. But uh, we'll try later. We've chucked all this cat food out here. Tuna cat food sort of biscuit things. Uh, I know there are reddies here and now I am spewing. I didn't bring the little bait traps because I've seen them caught in those traps here before. And I thought this net, nah, we're going to just clean up. <laughs> Hopeless, but let's see later on what happens. All right, what we're doing here is a bit of fly fishing on this lake because I've seen these rises out here in the past and um, I've never been sure what's going on. But I figure that trolling over rising fish isn't a good idea because you're just gonna you're just gonna scare them off because they're they're on the surface and this bloody boat's coming over. So we're just drifting out here. Unfortunately, there's a lot of boat traffic. It's giving me the you know what. But I, um, I found this little fly shop on St George's Road called, called Rod and Creel, run by this bloke called Bernard. And it's a fantastic little place. It's got a bicycle in the window. It's a very unusual quirky shop. And he sells traditional uh, fly fishing gear, like split cane rods. And he sells uh, silk fly tying lines. And he's a professional fly tire. And he said, this is what you need on this lake at this time. You need a Highland done with a little nymph dropper. So that's what I'm fishing. And there is the occasional rise around the boat. And as soon as that happens, I just twitch ever so slightly that dry at the end to lift up the nymph to make it look like it's coming up, hopefully inducing a take. And at the moment, it is not working at all. <laughs> but. Uh, we're going to do this for a bit and then we'll hit the river. Um, usually there's a lot more surface activity, so it's probably not quite what I was hoping for out here. Well, it's 10.43 a.m. on Saturday and we decided to come up here to the Goulburn because we couldn't get access to the Hawkwa. And um, I'm on my second beer for the day, the Cooper's Green. I uh, started with the Cooper's red but the river is high and murky however we're at this fishing access point here and they're, they're just some slower water in the shadows so we're going to try with the mussels and the worms and burling the crap out of it with a few maggots and see what happens well i just caught a bloody big fish unfortunately it's just a carp but he's a big carp look at the size of that Woo! look at that that is monstrous. It was a hell of a fight to get him in. I thought it was a trout, but it's still good practice trying to land big fish like this because that was bloody hard. He shot off downstream and, oh well, I'll just put him out of his misery, I suppose. Good night, Charlie. All right, Mad Dog's pulled up a fish here. It's a, is that a brown? Yeah. It's a brown, yep. Just a small brown. We've changed rivers to the Jamison. And what a waste of time the Goulburn was. Too high, too muddy. Then we met an angler who fished this area a lot and said, forget the Goulburn, full stop. Much bigger fish in the other rivers. So that is the first trout for today. Nothing spectacular about it, but nevertheless caught on a worm on the bottom. All right, here we are at the weigh-in. And uh, first up is Alan Russell. Where'd you get this fish, Alan? I got that in the Delatite River. On, on what? Muscle. Muscle. This is up near Merijig, yeah? Yep. Everyone's headed up there for the clearer water because it's very murky down here. Alright, here we have a big, uh, what is that, a brown trout? Who caught that? Me. Oh, it's, it's, it's Ken caught this up at the uh, Delatite and Merijig. Ken, what did you get him on? Worm. Worm? Yeah. It's been a tough day's fishing for everybody. A lot of the guys on the lake didn't weigh in. 
even though they've got forty thousand dollar boats. Get stuck. Get stuck. My boat's only worth six thousand dollars, Petrus. Andrew Bandy here. We are looking. You are looking at a master fisherman, a master of the float fishing technique in rivers, and that's some impressive fish from a very small way in tonight. Andrew, where'd you get these fish? In the water. And uh, just worms downstream on the float. Yep. Young Aaron, now he talks a lot. Let's see if his uh, fishing technique is as big as his mouth. <laughs> Two rainbows, one brown by Aaron on the delatype. What technique were you using there? Float, fish, uh, float fishing with just a worm on the end and just drifting it into currents. And what's the total weight there? 0.795. 0.795 for young Aaron. You should be proud of yourself, son. Yeah. 1.5 is the biggest fish there uh, by Rod. And it's a nice slab. Can you just hold that up? Look at that. Let, let, let Rod hold it up. Uh, we got them on Tazzies. Yeah, different colour Tazzies. Point eight four zero for John Clark. Don't confuse him with the comedian because he's never said a funny thing in his life. John? Yes. <laughs> Where'd you get these fish? Satellite. At Satellite River. You know. Just river fishing? Yeah, river fishing. Float fishing or? Uh, no, right, uh, down the bottom. Very and good. On scrubbies. Very good, very good. He doesn't, now this man doesn't have a $50,000 boat, he doesn't have $10,000 of lures, he just fishes right in front of the lodge and he's weighing in when other anglers haven't been able to. It just shows you, all you need to do is get down the op shop and get yourself a fishing outfit and bloody sit in front of the club lodge. 1.010. 1 1.0 1 for Frank Pernick in front of the lodge. Oh, here's an Tilio decor Two browns, two rainbows. Is all up the Yeah. Atilio, how'd you find the fishing today? Yeah, small. But it was pretty, pretty good, Six, actually. Five. What time of day did you get these ones? Oh, just before lunch. All of them before yeah. lunch? Yeah. And there's some in the afternoon. 1.765. Yeah. Well, it's Sunday now, and um, I was trying some Czech nymphing, and... I would have filmed it, but it was so bloody depressing because I didn't catch any fish or even get a bite that I, I, lost, I lost interest. But uh, I must admit, it's a lot of fun. I want to try it again next time. Uh, but let's head over now to Dunlop Bayswater and see who won the big shield that all the clubs have been fighting for. Um, Dunlop Bayswater Angling Club weighed in a total of 3.7 kilos of fish. Preston North at England Club weighed in a total of 15.5 oh. kilograms of fish. Now the way we work out the winner is it's uh, it's the number of anglers divided by the weight. So DBAC got 0 0.49, so um, just under 1.5, and um, Preston North got is 0.7. So clearly um, Preston and Northcote are again for the one. Two. <laughs> Fourth year in a row, uh, winners of the, um, the Halker Association um, Trout Competition. Drug <laughs> test. Uh, well done, congratulations. To President. And the money um, with a 1.52 kilo trout is Rod King. Well done, Rod. Thank you very much. So there's your. Um, there's your trophy to put on the shelf. Thank you. you Speech. Oh, Alright, okay, and uh, this is all yours, buddy. Oh, thanks a <laughs> lot. I've, I've given up smoking, but I'll take the cash. <laughs> Good on you. Uh, uh, I well just done. like, again, I'd like to thank. Uh, Guys were putting on a good spread last night. A bit of beginner's luck here. It's the first time I've fished the comp, so I'll definitely be coming back uh, next year. And yeah, just thanks a lot. And I have to say thanks to the young bloke Jason, because apparently without him I'd be nothing. <laughs> he steered me onto the fish I caught yesterday. Well done, Jay. Well done. Well done. So four and a half kilos by myself. So. All right. Well, wasn't that exciting to see Rod King win, win the big trophy? Let's now have a look at the Preston. Weigh in and see who won in the in this club.
Here comes Big John Moore, Eildon fishing local and self-proclaimed expert. <laughs> Self-proclaimed. Where'd you get that from? Now, where did you? When'd you get this one on, John? Uh, a Bassman spinnerbait. A spinnerbait. <laughs> At what depth? Sixty Hurry. foot. <laughs> Sixty foot, my ass. All right, here comes Andrew Brandy, the float fishing king. Looks like it's going to be a race between him and his brother for the uh, river award. Oh, look at that slab of a fish. Taken out of the delatite, I presume? That's a really big brown trout. 1.47 in total. Wow. Worm fishing with floats beats all other methods, it okay, seems. Uh, Young Jason King weighing in a brown. Where'd you get him, Jason? Um, Goss Bay. And what sort of lure? Uh, pink Tassie. 440. How deep? 440. No. It's just not it Really? Who picked the lure? <laughs> Bill Brandy back on the uh, Della, not the Della, sorry, the Jamison again this morning had bagged out by 9am, floating those bloody worms down the river. It should be made illegal in this club. <laughs> this technique has been mastered. There's so no should trawling in the lake. <laughs> There's no point That's persisting with it because it's going to empty the rivers of fish. Four rounds in one rainbow. Yeah. Four rounds in one rainbow. Yeah. One point eight hundred. One point. 800, 1.8 kilos. Well done, oh, money, money. I do remember my young bloke won this little thing in the jar has to come back. It's been yeah, in the club the more years than most people. Okay, and uh, it's second and third, and I can't split them at the moment, is uh, Phil and Andrew Brandy uh, with uh, both the bags. I think uh, Andrew had, uh, if I do a quick calculation, 1.3 plus 1 point, that's about 2 point. 2.9 and uh, Phil had uh, that's the worm fisherman there Phil had 3.15 uh, so Phil came there you go the worm fishing in the rivers way to go to get fish in the shortest possible time and that about wraps it up from Pedro Harvey on this trip we'll see you again on the grand final weekend trip up here which will be the same bumper fishing trip Full of excitement, hopefully the water levels will have dropped, it'll have warmed up a bit and we can get some fish check nymphing. Until then, I recommend you drink Leffy beer and find lots of nymphettes, I mean nymphs. Um, so from Vladimir and the Bokov here, it's adios amigos. You idiot!